No matter the institution, company, or organization, everyone wants to find the best talent, and everyone wants to keep their best talent. Higher education is no different. I'm Eddie Francis. I've worked in both talent acquisition and higher ed marketing. On this podcast, we're going to explore the ways to create a great experience for faculty and staff on your campus. Because in education, a great employee experience equals a great student experience. And who doesn't want that? We'll have some honest conversation, get insights from experts, and hear success stories from campuses. It's all about developing an attractive employer brand, something that'll make the people say, I want to work there. So we're going to get this party started with a very simple question. What is employer branding? And the guest who's going to answer that is someone I know from my recruitment days, Craig Fisher. He's the founder, employer brand and marketing strategist for Talonet Media. He's consulted with such brands as Toyota, Accenture, Siemens, Samsung, Subway and J.P. Morgan Chase, just to name a few. You can find out more about Craig and his work at TalonetLive.com. Here's my conversation with Craig Fisher. Craig, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. How are you? Fantastic, Eddie. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Hey, listen, the, so the world of employer branding is interesting in higher education. It's still relatively a new concept for some colleges and universities. And so just to kind of lay some groundwork here, um, the first thing is, let's find out about you. How did you even get into employer branding in the first place? So I've got an advertising degree, right? And how many of us actually use our, our, our degree in any way, shape or form, but like everyone else, uh, ended up in recruiting somehow. When I started my own firm, eventually I had been sort of taking advantage of what the uh, internet had to offer, right? I'd been recruiting since the days that were just fledgling internet, like 1996. Uh, But by the mid 2000s, I was taking apart LinkedIn and figuring out what it could do. And I was also trying to help my employers, my, the, the companies that I was recruiting for to brand themselves better, to make my job easier when recruiting for them. Eventually companies started asking me to come speak to their recruiting annual meetings and fireside chats and sales kickoffs and things like that, because I got sort of Twitter famous for my opinions on the matter. And, and I got invited to uh, write the first ever employer brand article for uh, Universum's quarterly, first ever quarterly magazine. And oh, wow. that's, a, that's an employer branding uh, magazine in 2009. Really, it just became a thought leadership business of its own. And eventually I was able to just do that kind of strategy work and, and sell my part of the staffing business and, and uh, executive search business. And since uh, 2011, have been doing literally talent attraction, employer branding, recruitment marketing, and process improvement. So what exactly is employer branding? Right. So employer branding is is really the process of managing your reputation as an employer amongst job seekers, right? Your potential universe of hires, current employees, and key stakeholders. As a, for instance, university or a privately held startup or you know, you may have investors and other people who are interested in how you brand yourself for employment, not just your goods and services. And I'm very curious as to the universities that you have worked with, mm-hmm. when you had this initial conversation about them, how did you explain to them about the importance of employer branding to an organization, in particular, uh, an institution of higher learning? Right. Well, if you want to attract the best type of people for your specific organization, you want to take a practiced and focused approach versus being generic, right? So you want to look at what's interesting and unique about your organization as a great place to work. And sometimes that might mean interviewing the people who work there about what they love about it, right? Mm -hmm. You want to be transparent. Uh, as an employer, you want to emphasize the great things um, and acknowledge, you know, what might be lacking 
in your offering and say, hey, we're striving to get better. That's why we need you to come join us and help us be the greatest. It's funny because large employers and even sometimes large universities think that because they've got a good reputation for their, you know, their service offering, that mm -hmm. that that makes everyone want to join them as an employee. But that's not necessarily true. You have to kind of showcase what's good. Yeah, I want to come back to the data collection part in just mm -hmm. a little bit, especially the role that HR plays in this. But mm -hmm. I want to bring you into um, uh, just very quickly into a situation I was in where uh, I was talking to a higher up from an institution. I just got into this thing with them and I don't remember what the conversation was, but it did turn to employee branding. I told them that it was something that I was pretty passionate about and I'm standing there going, this, this, this is the future though. This is the future of higher ed. We got to really, really dive into this thing. And this person's response to me was, well, our employers aren't exactly happy to be here. So I don't know how that's even going to work. And so my question is, when it comes to building an, a competitive employer brand, is it about employees being happy, air quotes? Well, OK, so there's a whole sort of uh, part of employer branding where you are marketing to your existing employees. Right. right. And one of the things that makes for happy employees is having engaged employees. OK, and so that data collection piece, right, if you're active about asking your employees what do they like and what needs improvement, they feel more engaged. If you are active about asking your employees to help deliver the message to the world about the good parts of the company's culture and in the process, reminding them of what the good parts of the company's culture are based on the surveys that you've done with them or the interviews that you've done and say, you know, we need your help to attract more great people like you and become a better place to work. Uh, they feel more engaged, right? And so making them part of the process instead of just trying to brand around them if they're not happy uh, goes a long way towards creating a happier work environment. I know that in recruiting and in HR in general, there had been this research that basically said, um, is not so much about the money. It is about the engagement. Is that still true today? It's also about the money. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's not be mistaken. Yeah. Um, but uh, sometimes it is what it is. Yeah. Right. Um, we companies have bands and those bands don't get easily changed. Right. So your, your salary bands, maybe stuck for a little while and you have to yeah. do other things. And so not just engagement, but opportunity to learn, to contribute in other ways like ERG groups, right? Um, and the ERG to, being employer, yeah. employment or resource employer, groups. Employee, employee, employee resource, resource groups, groups, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, lean in groups where they can sort of make an impact aside from their job. And then also an opportunity to help the organization or institution make a good impact on the community, right? Um, and so all of these things, it's its learning and growth and uh, participation that help employees feel more connected to the company or to the institution. All righty, we're gonna play a game, guys, okay? So first and foremost, get a pen, get a paper, pull out your notes app on your phone, whatever it might be, okay? Got it? Great. All right, what keywords does your website currently rank for? Take a couple seconds, right? One, two, three, four. I give you a few, not just a couple. What doesn't it rank for that you think it should rank for? Okay, one, two, three, four. Now, what are a few keyword opportunities that you could be winning on if you just simply tweaked some of your existing website copy? Got it? Okay, how'd you do? Ooh, not so hot. Not sure what you can, what you're currently ranking for, or not sure what you could be ranking for. Well, that's okay because our friends at DD Agency want to help you answer all of these questions. DD Agency is a higher ed specific marketing technology agency that has conducted countless SEO audits for colleges and universities across the country. In these audits, they detail where you currently rank, what you could be ranking for 
exactly how copy should be tweaked on website pages, and so much more. If this sounds like something that you could benefit from, give the guys at DD Agency a ping and be sure to mention that Enrollify sent you to claim a 10% discount on any of their SEO offerings. So head on over to enrollify.org forward slash DDA SEO. That's DDA as in DD Agency SEO, or simply follow the link in the show notes below. That will guarantee you get a 10% discount off of your audit. All right, head on over to enrollify.org slash DDA SEO, or simply Google DD Agency, find DD Agency's website, and be sure to mention that you heard about them through Enrollify when you request your audit. All right, folks, back to the show. One other conversation that was really kind of interesting to me, I was uh, talking to yet another institutional leader and uh, again, going through the whole employee brand sp uh, spiel. And uh, this this leader uh, said, well, listen, you know, that that that's fluff. OK, this whole employer brand thing, we're, we're mission based. OK, colleges, as if I didn't know this, <laughs> colleges and universities are mission based. So yeah. we don't necessarily have to do this employer brand thing. How do you respond to that? Well, again, this is like Toyota saying we're Toyota. Everyone wants to work for us. We're mission based. Kaizen, right? C continuous improvement. Everyone knows this. Everyone wants to work for us. Well, no, <laughs> not 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 everyone knows what you're really about. And yeah. uh, even great brands get bad reputations because disgruntled people who leave the organization are the ones who post reviews, right? Yeah. So if you look at Indeed or Glassdoor uh, about comments about working at a certain employer, it's really only the bad comments that uh, take up most of the room. And so you have to be active about acknowledging people's responses there and saying, thank you for the feedback. We're working on this. We'd love to talk to you about it offline, right? Just being heard helps a lot of people to feel better. And then it's really that reputation management piece there because it's those people who go out in the world who you can turn into people who would actually refer great people back to your organization. And, uh, you know, hiring is a lot about referring. And just because you're mission-based doesn't mean that you're good at the process piece of getting referrals and or making it easy for people to apply to your jobs. And you can't necessarily just write these folks off as this rental employees or somebody who, you know, you, you can't exactly just go back and say, well, if you go back and look at their record, they really weren't all that great an employee anyway. So, of course, they wrote something horrible on Glassdoor about us. Yes, but you also can't say that half or more of the people in the world aren't good at some point somewhere. Right. right. And that's kind of what you're saying in that situation. That's not necessarily true. It might have just been the wrong situation. Many involuntary leave leavers or involuntary leavers of an organization go on to do great things in other places. Mm -hmm. And that's why you don't burn bridges. That's why you don't, uh, you know, make it a very uncomfortable last conversation or site of your organization is with security. Or right, I mean, there, there's there are ways to have reputation management even as people are, are walking out the door, and that may be a small thing like having their their leader just say thank you for your mm. service. I appreciate you, and I hope you're doing well. And check in with me when you get settled. Mm. So the higher education market is really crowded. You got over 4,000 colleges and universities yeah. in the country. So it's really hard for one institution to be truly different unless they do have something that's truly different, like a gender-based institution or someone mm -hmm. who's focused on a particular uh, type of thing like aeronautics. When an institution decides that they're going to start the process of building that competitive employer brand, what kind of HR data do you think that they should start collecting in order to put themselves in a competitive position? Certainly surveying your own employees about what's great about your culture is a good place to start. And also what needs improvement. Mm -hmm. And you should survey a, a wide swath of types of employees, right? Leaders, new people, um, folks that work at all levels uh, in your organization. 
And then you should also do some sort of group design thinking workshops to get people talking amongst each other because things come out in those conversations that don't necessarily come out in one-on-one -on -one conversations. Uh, and the comments start to build on each other. So this is a really good place to start. And then also interviewing your job candidates, right? The people who applied to jobs at your organization that uh, either didn't get the job for whatever reason or didn't take the job for whatever reason. Those are also great pe people to survey about their experience applying and interviewing with your company. And then include some people who did get hired, right? And talk to them about their experience. There's an institution called the Candidate Experience Awards or the Candies for short, that you can participate in for a few hundred dollars administrative fee. And they'll give you the setup to talk to the people who have applied to your jobs and uh, and survey them. And, and then they'll help analyze the data for you and tell you what it means. Craig, this is uh, some good information to get us started, to at least get the, the car, you know, going down the road. Mm -hmm. um, how can people get in touch with you if they have any questions for you? I'm Craig at TalentNetLive.com. I'm pretty easy to find on places like LinkedIn. I'm all over the place there. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram at FishDogs. That is my hacker name on the interwebs. And uh, I, I'd love for you to join me there as well. Outstanding. Thanks a lot, Craig. Really appreciate your time. And uh, thanks for joining us on I Want to Work There. Thanks, Eddie. Appreciate it. I Want to Work There is part of the Enrollify Podcast Network. If you like this podcast, check out other Enrollify shows. The Enrollify Podcast Network is growing by the month with all kinds of marketing, admissions, and higher ed technology shows. And they're jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks, all designed to empower you to be a better higher ed professional. There are some great industry voices that you can check out, like Terry Flannery, my good friend Jamie Hunt, Allison Tercio, Corinne Myers, Dustin Ramsdale, Jamie Gleason, and many more. Learn more about the Enrollify Podcast Network at podcasts.enrollify.org. Our shows help higher ed marketers and admissions professionals find their next big idea. So uh, come and find yours.